Hi there, and welcome to Baseball by Design. I am minor league baseball correspondent for SportsLogos.net, Paul Caputo, broadcasting live, as always, from the Helmet Sunday Hall of Fame in my basement in Fort Collins, Colorado. Today, we're going to talk about one of the, I, I think it's one. Of, it's fair to say that the Binghamton Rumble Ponies are, are one of the sort of classic, wacky minor league baseball nicknames in the last, you know, five, 10 years. I think that, uh, you know, we're in the middle of the era of the wacky minor league baseball nickname. And the Rumble Ponies are are part of that trend for sure. And uh, I'm going to be speaking with Jason Klein from Brandios uh, later on. I'll be speaking with Judy Hess of Visit Binghamton about carousels. And right now, I am joined by John Hughes, who was the owner of the team when the team changed its name. Mercifully, from the Binghamton Mets, which was very boring. It is a longstanding tenet of this podcast that being named for your parent club is boring and should be against the rules. So we were thrilled. I was thrilled to see the team change its name from the Binghamton Mets to the Binghamton Rumble Ponies. Mr. Hughes, thank you for joining me. How are you doing? Hey, hey, I'm listening to everything you say. It's a compliment. So I'm I'm happy to help out and uh, happy to be part of the minor league baseball tradition for sure. Oh, man, it's well, it's 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 something that, you know, I mean, obviously, this is a podcast about minor league baseball logos and nicknames and the significance to the local community of these names. Right. So I, you know, I just it feels like such a missed opportunity every time I see a team named for its parent club. And I get, you know, sometimes there are teams that are owned by their parent clubs, but even with that, I think that they could, you know, they could have unique nicknames. So the Oklahoma City Dodgers, boring, right? They used to be the Red Hawks. That was fun. The Syracuse Mets, I'm sorry to say, the, uh, you know, the the big brother to the Binghamton Rumble Ponies, the Syracuse okay. Mets, boring. <laughs> you know, there's, there's, there's fun stuff they could be doing up there. So the Binghamton Rumble Ponies, I was, you know, I, I was thrilled, first of all, because it's a, it's a fun name. It's, it's unique to the local community and it tells a story. And so I'm going to ask you, I know that you were intimately involved in the process of the name change so i'm just gonna i'm gonna ask you to, to just start right off the bat with what what the heck's a rumble pony and how come that's the nickname for the the baseball team in binghamton yeah so so it's a it, it to me it's a great story right it's a personal story because as you know if everybody does the research on the team uh prior to me actually purchasing the team the team was destined to be relocated um, and all, all that came out of an unfortunate lawsuit and uh, a lot of red tape and paperwork got involved and i said well, the first thing that we need to do uh, under my tutelage is let's define what this team is and what our future is. And to me, the, the team did not belong to the Mets. And that's no disrespect to the New York Mets. They're a fantastic organization and an even better partner. But this team needed to represent the community, right? Um, that's first and foremost. The, the Binghamton Mets, the blue and orange, uh, the blue represented the Dodgers and the orange represented the Giants, both of which left you know, New York City, uh, and none of that had anything to do um, with Binghamton. So we had to define something uh, that was from the culture of Binghamton, represented the city, and tied that team to that community um, forever and ever. And, and that's why we kind of moved forward uh, with the process. So so what's a rumble pony? How come rumble ponies for uh, for Binghamton? So, you, you know, when you get to what is a rumble pony, it, it, it's representative of, of the community. When we looked at the community, uh, one of the things that really stuck out to us, the team, and to the city and the community and the fans was, hey, Binghamton's the carousel capital of the world. Uh, so why not have uh, the team represented from one of the fiercest, strongest animals off the carousel? And that's the, that's the horse, the rumble pony. Um, the Rumble Pony represents the fighting spirit of Binghamton um, that's been through a lot over the years, but is rallying and uh, getting stronger. So what is it that makes Binghamton the, the carousel capital of the world? Well, well look, one of the fantastic things that um, I, I learned about the community as I began to um, integrate myself into the, that part of the upstate New York was, you know, these carousels are a hallmark and a longstanding tradition of Binghamton. These carousels were bought by some of the great manufacturing entities of the time, um, and they would take these carousels and buy them for the people. Um, they were bought by the community for the community, and a lot of the community leaders were the driving force behind buying these carousels, putting them in the communities for the families to enjoy uh, throughout their tenure, and they've always been free which I think is an incredible thing, right? They've always been free. Uh, and the people are there to enjoy them. And <clears throat> they make a big deal of it, right? You can, uh, in, in Binghamton, and I've got mine, uh, you, you get a card and you go around to each of the five carousels and you get your card punched. And there you go. That makes you uh, a, 
a citizen of Binghamton going forward for sure. <laughs> it's like a citizenship test. I like it. That's funny. It is. Is it is it something that you think that that Binghamton residents really like are are drawn to and and claim? Is it something that that Binghamton residents know that we're the carousel capital of the world, or was this you know when this identity came out was that sort of new information? Uh, I mean, I think when you look at Binghamton, right, it's a, it's a self anointed thing. Though often those are the things you have the most proud of is when you self anoint yourself, and yeah. uh, that's kind of what Binghamton did, and that's what made it uh, so great. Obviously, you know, in, in learning about the community, they were very proud of this, and I mean. Like you said, greatly. Uh, a lot of people say that, hey, we're this and we're the king of this and we're the capital of this. Uh, Binghamton's come out and said that. No one's ever contested it, right? So that means they're <laughs> running afraid of the rumble ponies. So when I know when the the name was first announced, there was a lot of sort of, you know, people sort of furrowing their brow, brow a little bit and like, what's a Binghamton? rumble pony? <laughs> oh, well before that. Well before that. All right. So tell me this story. Tell, what what was the reaction when the when the name came out? Oh, when I, you know, when I first came out uh, with the name change, said, "Hey, we're, we're actually going to do this." People were, people were like, "What are you thinking?" You know, here's this new guy comes to town and wants to change everything. <laughs> it's going to be a disaster. He doesn't know us. He doesn't know what he's doing. How can we trust him with his great community asset? And uh, sure enough, you know, you know, we worked through the process. We got a lot of uh, names from people all across the community. Um, and then we kind of got down to five that were really kind of. You know, some of them were fun, some of them were uh, serious, and some of them were like, okay, let's see how this goes. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I took a whole lot of grief, a whole lot of grief. Um, <laughs> after we announced the first five, and look, even before that, it was, people gave me a lot of grief, but then I got almost 10,000 name suggestions, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so that's significant. That means the people care. The, yeah. they, they care and they're passionate about this. So that was incredible. And then when we came down to the final five, uh, I'll never forget it. We uh, it was during the middle of a five game homestand, and uh, we did it after the third game on a Thursday night. And uh, the next night, uh, I've got the mayor of the city and the deputy mayor come to me and say, "Hey, John, you can't be serious about this. They're <laughs> going to kill you. They're going to kill me." They were calling the mayor saying, "Make this guy stop." Uh, you know the whole thing. Um, so, yeah, if you you can Google me on. Um, instagram and twitter and all that stuff you know there's pictures of me he's a stud muffin whatever i mean all this stuff it was pretty it was pretty merciless it was a tough time and you really had to i had to dig down and say okay am i committed to this change and, and, and returning this team to the community and yeah you know fortunately we stuck with it because it, i think it paid off you, you know i think it paid off in so many ways right uh, i mean look during the baseball contraction not only baseball contraction People, I think, then really got it. They really got yeah. it. Like, this is now our team. It's not the Mets. It's it's our team. It's Binghamton's team. And and we're going to go fight for it. And, and I think that that really happened. I mean, people really associated it. This is our team. It's our name. It doesn't belong to the Mets. This is this is the Binghamton Rumble Ponies, and we want to keep them. So, so Absolutely. Yeah, and they were, they were the Mets from 1992 to 2016. And then you were talking about the name, the team contest. The other possibilities were stud muffins, which I believe you guys had as a as an alternate identity uh, later on. Uh, yeah, stud, it was pretty popular. Uh, the stud muffins and has that sort of signature brandiose sort of muscular, you know, yeah. literally it was a, it was a muffin, an anthropomorphized muffin. Uh, the rocking horses, the timber jockeys, and then the bullheads for catfish in the Susquehanna River, and mm -hmm. gobblers because of turkey hunting. So you're going from you know, a decade and a half of being named for the parent club, being named for the Mets to a selection of pretty wacky names. And so you said that was a, it was a pretty strong reaction against those names. If I recall this correctly, when, you know, when I wrote that article in 2017 about the team, the turnaround started the, the acceptance and the, and the embracing of this, this name, because I think people really like it now. I think that has really turned around. Oh yeah. Uh, that started when people saw the logos, I think, because the the logos, you know, the, the rumble pony, the the sort of, you know, scary horse, basically, is a little bit badass, right? Like the nickname sort of wacky, but the the nickname, or I'm sorry, the, the logo itself is is kind of fierce. And, and I think when that logo came out, people really, really liked that. And there was a strong positive response to that, you know, with the name. And I think people still like, 
hear Rumble Ponies now, and they're like, okay, that's you know, that's a pretty wacky nickname. But the logo itself is 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 pretty fierce, and I think people really like it. Was that your experience? Oh yeah, you, you, you know, when you first say, okay, we're going to be the Rumble Ponies, people think, you know, My Little Pony was what came to mind, right? Uh, that was the the mindset, My Little Pony, and we came <laughs> up with something rolling, hitting hard, and being really tough and strong and yeah. uh, uh, fierce. It really kind of changes people's minds of okay this i get it now i get it now this is pretty cool and this is something to be proud of right i mean these are this is a strong um portrayal of our community yeah it you know i mean you you could have gone sort of cartoony with it and uh you know just this uh the if you know again it's an audio podcast so if you haven't actually seen the logo you should go 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 google it because it's a very it's a very cool logo and there's a whole suite Something that Brandios does, and I'm sure I'll be talking with Jason about uh, in the next segment here, is they do a whole suite of logos that sort of tell a story, and and this one is is no different. But none of them, none of the logos in this suite are like, you know, cutesy, smiling. You know, it's it's all sort of sort of fierce and and you know, wood and 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 metal basically. So that's that is something that you know, carousels are cutesy. My Little Pony is cutesy, and then this logo sort of turned that on its head, and I think that people really. Re- responded to that for sure you know this this team really you know for its entirety has been affiliated with the Mets with the exception very early on you know for for two years they were affiliated with Cleveland in 87 and 88 and then Seattle in 89 and 90 but since 1991 you know this has been sort of sort of Mets country and I'm sure many people in Binghamton are actually Mets fans so um that must have been a hard sell in some ways to to change the the name from the the parent club to the to something local and so I'm I'm glad that it was embraced eventually <laughs> after you put all those names out. Oh yeah, look, I mean, I took a lot of flack. I took a lot of flack uh, going out to eat, to walking down the street, you know, going throughout the stadium. Uh, I, I mean, it was it was challenging, right? Personally, because you're like, man, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? And sure. You look yourself in the mirror and just kind of push through and you know i'm incredibly thankful that yes indeed it was the, the right thing to do and i think people not only did they embrace it they came to be rumble ponies themselves right when it came time to engage with major league baseball about things like contraction when it came time to support the team for the all-star game yeah. uh, i mean everybody really kind of took hold of it and, and said man this is this is where we want to be we want to be recognized we want to be proud yeah did it have the intended effect you you mentioned that you know that the team was on the brink of contraction and i know there was you know there were conversations about the ballpark and and did the did the rebrand sort of turn around the franchise such that now it is you know it it survived the vogon destructor fleet that came through and reorganized minor league baseball is, is this is with this new brand is the franchise i know you sold the team in november but uh you know you you left it in a better place than than you found it. Uh, is it, you know, are we past that that concern with Binghamton now that uh, that the the franchise was in trouble? Oh yeah, well look, I would be completely remiss if I didn't uh, acknowledge uh, a couple of people. Right, number one uh, is the the mayor of Binghamton, uh, Mayor Rich David. Number two, uh, our local senator Fred Akshar, because what happened is, as well as the Binghamton City Council. Everybody got together behind this team, right? So when we came out and said, okay, not only is the team staying, but we're now going to be your team. And then you saw uh, the first of two or three phases of renovations around the stadium, and we made it into Rumbletown, right? It wasn't just uh, the baseball ball- ballpark. It was Rumbletown. People said, hey, hey let's go to Rumbletown uh, for the game. So we got to that level, and then we got petitioned to get the All-Star game with the support of everyone, you know, uh, those people kind of put us in place. And then when the contraction happened, we had so much momentum on our side that Senator Chuck Schumer jumped in and said, Hey, I'm going to help these guys push uh, as well uh, against major league baseball. So we had all this momentum on our side. Why? Because we weren't the Mets because we are the Binghamton rumble ponies. We are the team of the community for the community by the community. And I mean, I can't say it enough. A lot of people want to say this is why the team survived this is why the team survived to me the reason the team survived is because it was the community's team and the community rallied everyone and fought like hell and won 
Well, that's I mean, it's definitely a success story. And that's I'm I'm glad to hear that. And I hadn't heard that about the the amount of sort of public figures coming out to support the team as well. So that's a definitely definitely a great a great minor league baseball story and a a, a great community story and shows the power of a of a u- unique nickname. Speaking of unique nicknames, uh, you've had some fun alternate brands out there. You mentioned that, uh, or, or we mentioned that you played as the as the Stud Muffins uh, in a sort of what could have been night, I guess. But you also had the, you know, in the in the sort of food frenzy, the minor league baseball food okay. frenzy with teams being named for, you know, food items. You know, I wrote about this back in 2018. But what is a, and correct me if I'm saying this wrong, what is a speedy? Well, I've never been to Binghamton because if you don't know what a speedy I, I don't know what a speedy is. Told, truth be told, I didn't either. It is uh, cubed meat in, in a unique marinade that is uh, from Binghamton, right? It was developed in Binghamton. There's, there's two different kinds. There's Saptamakia and there's the Lupo guys. We are, uh, they're both fantastic uh, partners of the team and really work with us well. So we're, we're happy to have that. But a speedy is like a cubed meat and in a dressing. It's more like an Italian uh, style dressing you marinate it open it on a uh, cook it on a fire roasted grill so uh, and then you put it on a big bun it, it is a fantastic sandwich my kids love them They've never <laughs> had one they're fantastic i have not had one and uh, i can tell you my uh, my buddies and i do a trip every year called baseball palooza where we go to different minor league ballparks in a different part of the country and we have we have been talking about trying to find a uh, a time to do a an upstate new york you know sort of New England, New York, maybe uh, Pennsylvania road trip here. So I think I might have to get to Binghamton now for the Rumble Ponies, but also for a Speedy because that sounds pretty amazing. And not just because it's 8.20 in the morning in Colorado right now and I haven't had breakfast yet either. So <laughs> that sounds yeah, pretty well, good. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, I mean, you, know, you mentioned the road trip, right? It's incredible. If you were to go, say, fly into – you know, even Philadelphia, man, you could go, you could go to Reading, you could go to Hershey, you could go to uh, Lehigh Valley, you could go to uh, Scranton, and then Binghamton. I mean, they're all within two hours apart, spend 10 bucks on a ticket and have a fantastic time and, and see things unlike you've ever seen before. Yeah. All kinds of minor league baseball parks. Well, that's one of the considerations is how close these parks are to one another. And that part of the country is definitely rich in in both affiliated and, you know, independent baseball I haven't mentioned yet, and I should have, that the uh, Binghamton Rumble Ponies are the double-A affiliate of the Mets. Uh, I usually try to get that in earlier in the podcast, but uh, we just jumped right into the to the name before I mentioned that. So there's lots of other minor league baseball in that part of the country uh, at all levels. And so you're right. You're right. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to put in John Hughes's vote for Baseball Palooza 2023 in uh, in New York, Pennsylvania area. So <laughs> there is. Yeah, there's I'm a- sure the, 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 the colonel of the Rumble Ponies would welcome you there. He's a great guy. I'd make you at home for sure. Uh, and, and, you know, one thing I'd be remiss if I also didn't add is, look, when when, when the idea of the name change first came out, um, I went to the Mets and I said, hey, guys, you know, we're thinking about doing this. Or, are you OK? Or is it something that's going to you'd rather uh, stay the same? And they said, hey, John, we think it's great. We did it in Brooklyn to tie ourselves with the community. We understand why you're doing it. Um, we're all in and supportive of you. So I thought that was great. You know, the Mets were supportive. Well, it's I'm I'm very glad to hear that because I know that there are times when, you know, especially with the wackier nicknames that the parent clubs don't always love it. And sometimes that's theme nights. I, I mean, famously, the the Yankees did not love the Staten Island pizza rats uh, for sure. So, you know, that that part of the conversation is is great to hear. And and I featured the Brooklyn Cyclones uh, not long ago uh, on this podcast. And I don't have plans to feature the Syracuse Mets or the St. Lucie Mets. I'm sorry, but those names are too boring. So. Maybe maybe someday when they change their name, I hope. But John, this has been a, a ton of fun, and I really appreciate you coming on and and, and joining me, and uh, and talking about the Rumble Ponies. It's such a fun brand, and and thank you for for bringing a unique nickname into minor league baseball with uh, with what you did with the Rumble Ponies. And um, and I'll just ask you, where uh, are are you on social media? I know people can find the Rumble Ponies, but are you on social media? Can people find you online? No, I'm not a big social media guy. I'm just uh, not. I'm just a working guy who tries to keep moving forward. You know. Well, you must get a ton done uh, not being on social media. So I'm I'm jealous of you for that in a way. So <laughs> well, I don't have to worry about the distractions, right? I don't have to worry about distractions. You know, even it was funny. Even when we had the social media for the teams, I wanted to see everything, right? So I would I would have access 
but I would have no right access because I didn't want to ever respond to anything. <laughs> create, create a firestorm, right? So I just, I just read what was going on. That's perfect. It's a great idea. Well, thank you again for joining me. And uh, I, I hope that we can bring Baseball Palooza to, uh, to upstate New York sometime because that would be a, a, a real treat to see the, the, see the Rumble Ponies and to see the result of your work there. So th- thanks so much. Thank you and have a great day. All right, you too, John. Thanks. All right, everyone. Welcome back. I am so pleased once again to be welcoming back to the show my friend Jason Klein from Brandios, yeah. the prolific design firm. What are the best adjectives that we can use? The, the prolific design firm is what I always say. Uh, <laughs> noted noted minor league baseball design firm, although you guys do some work outside of minor league baseball, I know. But anyway, Jason Klein of Brandios, thank you for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is I, I'm excited about this one. This is going to be a fun one to talk Holy about. Smokes. The Binghamton Rumble Ponies. The, this yeah. is one of the ones that I always point to where I'm just like, you know, people say, ah, well, minor league baseball names are just picking names out of hats and they're sort of wacky. And it's like, this is one of the ones where I'm like, no, this is this is me learning about America by learning about minor league baseball teams, because I never without without the Binghamton Rumble Ponies, I never would have known yep. that Binghamton, New York is the carousel capital of the world. What a the thing, carousel especially. capital of the world. Yeah. So you guys you guys took. So we've we've talked already on this episode about Binghamton and carousels, and uh, yeah. that was new information for me. And that's you know that was that was a fun thing to learn. You all were charged with the process of taking carousels yeah. and making them into an intimidating logo. This was not a wacky fun logo. You would think like Rumble Ponies, right, would be a, a sort of wacky <laughs> logo. But this is this this logo is deadly serious, right? There's nothing wacky about the logo except for the name, maybe. Yeah, I mean, when we traveled, I mean, it was we should have arrived in Binghamton. They're like, listen, like, just we're the carousel capital of the world. And I, again, I like you. I was like, I didn't know that. And they had like, they had like a whole bunch of carousels, uh, you know, historic. There's like, I think there's like five to seven of them. Um, you know, we're going around riding them. It was also um, uh, at the time, E60 was preparing to do a um, E60 documentary on Brandios. And this was the actual project um, that they followed us around on. So it was a, it was a weird because normally like it's just Casey and I were going on research visit the staff, but we had a whole, the whole ESPN crew was following us um, to document the process of a minor league baseball team going through a Mm rebrand. So um, for, on a personal level, it was a very, it was wild. Like, um, Jeremy Schapp came out to do, to interview us, uh, here in the studio. And, you know, we had like, you know, we went down to the, you know, historic San Diego, like icon landmarks, and they were doing drone shots of us walking through. It was wild. But, um, so, so my, my memory of this whole process was very like tied to, to the ESPN E60, um, which for whatever reason, like you just never, I just never like saw the light of day. Um, but so Casey and I were on, on, you know, carousel horses, like doing camera, you know, sort of, you know, like <laughs> being on camera, you know, uh, Casey got hit with a foul ball. Oh um, we were brainstorming ideas for team names um, in the stands and like it was on camera. So we don't, I've never seen the footage, but Casey got hit with like a foul ball like mm-hmm. in the process. Mm-hmm. So it was a really like, a, it was a wild story. Um, but, you know, we knew it was going to be the carousel castle of the world. So you had like the, um, Oh gosh, I don't even have the names in front of me, but like I know the Stud Muffins was one of um um was, I have it in front of me here. It was the here we uh, go. the Stud Muffins, the Rocking Horses, the Timber yep. Jockeys, and yep. the Rumble Ponies. Those are the Yeah. Oh, and then there were two others. So those were four based on the carousels. And then there were two others, the bullheads for the catfish found in yep. the Susquehanna River, uh-huh. and the gobblers because of turkey hunting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those were the six um, finalists. Yeah, and so I mean, obviously, you know, heavily on the carousel, but you know, yeah. um, so a lot of fun stuff. And it was like, okay, how do we tell the story? Because one of the things about carousels is they're kind of like, like, like grandmotherly, like they're kind of like yeah. old fashioned, kind of yeah. like they're a little stuffy, stodgy kind of like thing. Sure, they're fun, yeah. but they're kind of like you know, there's like a I don't know, they're just kind of like you know. So how do you how do you take that and um. One of the ideas we gravitated early on to was this idea of um, uh, like, you know, like rock and roll, like, mm-hmm. you know, like, oh, they're playing music while you're riding a horse. Yeah. Um, like, what if it was, you know, the opposite of sort of, you know, grandmotherly and it was like 
like eight, I, we played a lot of like back in black and a lot of ACDC <laughs> um, during the design process of this. We were like, no, carousel horse meets like ACDC. And then this idea of like sort of battle armor on the horse, um, you know, so it was like, oh, we could do like, you know, medieval thing. Um, you know, there's a lot of like filigree in the, some of the secondary uh, elements. Um, so it was like, you know, on, on, on one level, sort of like turn of the century, um, uh, you know, P.T. Barnum, Coney Island, uh, you know, that sort of thing. But then it was like, all right, but but also like flames and like rock and roll and like medieval battle horse. And like that was like that was how we were going to take this idea of the carousel capital, the port, um, you know, um, you know, capital of the world and build into a brand. And then from like a naming standpoint, you have like sort of, you know, um, pony, which is, you know, that's how we sort of like went the sort of like in the um, what was the word you you always use? Um, oh, vulnerable. Vulnerable. Yeah. yeah. It's sort of the pony element. But then it's like, oh, we're ready to go. We're right. ready to rumble. So the right. rumble ponies was like, oh, well, you know, so that that's how, yeah. So this is not like like sod poodle or sea unicorn or paddlehead, where you could you could ostensibly argue that it was sort of a nickname for this thing that other people have used in the past. Like rumble pony was a pure invention. Yeah, yeah. Of the team saying, yeah. this is we're 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 making up a name for carousels. Yeah, yeah. And this is where it started, like the whole like brandy. I was like, oh, there's the adjective noun guys, right? <laughs> like, yeah, the adjective noun guys. We see you out there. Um, but I think, but you know, and then it starts. I I think a lot about this. You know, so I would love to create like a map of all the different naming mechanism, like sort of mm -hmm. like the, the linguistics or the mm -hmm. you know, sort of the vernacular of how you approach naming, because there are names like iron pigs, which is you take a name and you flip it, yeah. um, you know, and you get something new, uh, you know, pig iron, you have this idea of slang, sod poodles, um, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, anyways, sod, sod poodles. Yeah, sea unicorns. That's another yeah. one. Great, great example, right? So it's a sort of slang, paddle heads, again, slang. Then you have names that are just like absolutely um on the nose. You have like um rubber duck, chihuahua. Like they they just are what they are. The challenge is how do you, you know, sort of make them diff you know, flip the script, if you will. Then you have names like um uh, rumble pone, adjective noun, yeah. um uh yard goats. Uh, flying squirrels, I think, is on the nose too. And you know, yeah. flying squirrels, a flying squirrel. Yeah. Yard goats is a, is sort of um, a slang. Yep. Uh, as much as it feels like an adjective noun, uh, it's yeah. it's slang. Um, yeah. And there's uh, you know jumbo jumbo shrimp we've talked about is oxymoron. Yep. Um, yep. So there's yep. all these different like you know ways that you could think about naming. Um, I'm sure if you gave me some examples, I could throw them in a category. But that <laughs> that's the idea is like. You know what, what, what like what, you know, what's the what's the approach? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, I mean, I think that's I mean that's sort of an interesting way to look at this to break them down into, I mean, and, and I think I wonder if you made a list of you know which ones are slang, which ones were uh, just pure inventions, which yeah. one were sort of alternate names for something that you know I mean that's probably I guess slang right, but that's and I'm sort of looking through right now like stripers, rubber ducks. Dirty right birds. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, so you could, you could sort of shift all of these into, into, you know, the, into these categories that you're, that you're talking about here for sure. Yeah. The, you know, we like to talk about the community reaction, right? Like, is this something that, you know, that, that this community, I mean, cause they had a team that was named for the parent club and that's yeah. boring. We've talked about that. They did have this, this logo, buddy, uh, buddy, the bee, right. Who was this guy Gilchrist <laughs> creation. And he's done a little bit of work. I mean, he's yeah. Yeah. Old school. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Like he's, uh, you know, he's done some sort of some fun stuff. I guess the Sea Dogs is his biggest one. Yeah. Uh, the I want to say he did the Norwich Navigator. Is that his too? He did the Maybe. Navigators. He yeah. did the New Britain Rock Cats before they became. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Early yeah. 90s. Yeah, yeah. Old school. Absolutely. Yeah. But he most of his work is like for like Disney and the Muppets and, and yeah. you know, all that sort of thing. But anyway, he did Buddy, Buddy the Bee for the Binghamton Mets. And then obviously, you know, the Binghamton Mets became the Rumble Ponies. So I, you know, you know that I like to talk about the the community reaction here. What was what was the feedback from going from named for the parent club with this kind of cutesy B as the logo to named for carousels with a sort of cutesy name, but with a kind of badass logo? I mean, in a way, if you're a Yankees fan, you can't root for Mets brand. No. So no. you know, and then also they got a lot of Phillies fans up there too. So oh, yeah. It was one of those things where 
um, like, how do we make this more accessible to more locals? Mm-hmm. And I don't want someone to go, oh, I'm a really, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Phillies fan. Like, so I can't root for the Binghamton Mets. Like, it's just, yeah. that's, that's really the biggest thing is that you're just, you're locked into a subset of major league fans. So yeah. if you're the, I don't know, Idaho Falls Padres, you're going to like, you know, oh, you got to be a Padres fan in Idaho Falls, and that's who your brand's limited to, and let, or Padres Nation or whatever. It's yeah. just so small. Yeah. Um, that's so a thin we, sliver of a Venn diagram right there. Super, super <laughs> thin. Super thin. So you want to like really bring in, you want to bring in America, you want to bring in, you know, the, and the world, like sort of into this story. And the ability to tell the story of the carousel cap of the world in a fun way mm-hmm. was, um, was super exciting. And I think, you know, candidly, like one thing that we're, we're, always transparent about is when we do name the team contest is help us name the team you know mm-hmm. ultimately you know the, the ownership is going to decide like it's their brand you know they sure. got to live with it like they're going to decide we're always very transparent that number one we want you to help us name the team like tell us what what you would name it you know and and, and you know and be proud of we're also very transparent that like the names that submitted may not be the actual names And a lot of that is, gosh, if you sent, you know, if you submitted ideas for carousel capital of the world, but all the names are trademarked Uh or all the names are, you know, problematic for whatever reason, it's like, well, let's not let that prevent us from telling the story of the carousel capital of the world. Let's find an alternate name to be able to get us into the story. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. a lot of the times they're like, well, this name was made up. Yeah. Absolutely. Like it was made up. Now right. there may have been like, you know, Paul may have submitted this team name and we're like, oh man, Paul's team name is really good, but we got problems with trademarks. Like it's still inspired by the name that Paul submitted. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, let's absolutely give Paul credit. Paul is the winner of the contest. Paul gave us the name, right? It's Paul's name. We just had to alternate because because of you know it's paul's story we had to alter it because of trademark legal issues whatever um, i feel like i should have a big prize pack coming right now you it's, should uh... you do and so many <laughs> but honestly most fans ha- get like lifetime tickets or i know it's great you know, like throw out the first pitch so we're always like how do we create the biggest prize for submitting yeah. the name you know either directly or it's inspired by yeah. and um and so that's that's the way rumble ponies came about you said that you and Casey uh, rode the rode some of the carousels there in town. We did, we yeah. did. I remember, um, I remember we rode the carousel. Um, it was one of the, the more prominent ones, and uh, you know, like afterwards, the I don't know, the photographer at ESPN was like, "Hey, come over here. I want to show you this video." <laughs> and it was like two grown ass men, like just like, <laughs> like I like you know, Kool Aid smiles, just like awesome. like living their best life on these carousels. And I was like, oh man, this is good footage. And then you never, I never saw it again. <laughs> so where do you prefer like the bouncing up and down horse on the outside? Do you oh. want the the stationary thing on the inside? Who where wants the stationary thing? Come on, Paul. Nobody does. No Nobody one wants does. the stationary. Listen, it was a softball question. I know. I mean, if you like, who's <laughs> Who's yeah, I've, yeah, we need to have a talk about who invented the stationary because if you can't <laughs> fully commit to the right. bobber, what's the, um, the bobber? Yeah, Is that a technical I made name? that up. No, I just oh. made that up. No, I was hoping I was, I was learning myself, some carousel you know, lingo here. No, I was trying to sound smart. <laughs> well, here's one thing I did not know okay. is that um, true carousel, authentic carousels, the horses are always looking outwards. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, so they're always bent to the right. The bench huh. to the right. Well, I guess it's like they're always looking outward. Um, and I remember I think we were in the design process on a concept, and they're like, Yeah, no, that's not that's not authentic. We were like, What are you talking about? Didn't you Good. notice they're all facing outward? We're like, oh. <laughs> so um, if your local carousel has a horse where his head is not facing outward, mm-hmm. y'all got a bootleg uh, carousel. Wow. All right. Yeah. See, aren't you don't you love having this kind of information? I mean, and- useless trivia. Yes. <laughs> Jeopardy is great uh, and, in the Brandios family. And you only have it for because of the, you know, the work that you've yeah. done in, in minor league baseball. Now, here's the other question, though, is, you know, with some carousels, there's zebras, tigers, yeah. dragons, unicorn, right? Like some of some of these these carousels can get pretty wacky with these. Uh, you know, other animals that they have, it feels like there's the the possibility for a minor league baseball team to incorporate some of these other animals into alternate identities down the road, maybe, you know, have. Well, have- okay. So that's interesting. Cause we, we talked a lot about that. And in the same vein that, you know, they're brown chihuahuas and, and gray chihuahuas, like 
right. you think tan, right? Mm -hmm. When you think it. And so mm -hmm. from a carousel, when you think carousel, you think horse. Um, we did have this conversation like, well, could it be a zebra or not right. a zebra, but like, could it be a tiger, right? It could be a right. tiger. It's like, uh, well, then you have like the Detroit Tigers. And so you oh, start yeah. getting into this um, uh, problematic because it leads you down some sort of association with something else that you don't want. Yeah. And then also it's not the most iconic version of said subject matter. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. once oh, yeah. you go down to the, you know, the, the, the rumble ponies, um, I mean, I guess we could do a zebra concept. Um, I don't know. I Probably mean, not many yeah. zebras in minor league baseball. Not many zebras. <laughs> the yes, uh, yes. Put that oh, in man. the books, Jason. This is always fun. I can't yeah, wait to keep doing this. You know, you're absolutely right. By the way, about the uh, you know, like I'm never going to buy a Binghamton Mets thing, but I have a Gwinnett Stripers thing. I was never going to buy a Gwinnett Braves. I've got Gwinnett Stripers. Yeah, we so. got you. The parent, you did. You we did got you, us. Paul. Mission accomplished. We got 100%. you. 100%. <laughs> Jason, this has been so much fun. I appreciate it. I love that you yeah. take the time out of your day to have these conversations. I love uh, telling your story to fans of minor league baseball. And, you know, thanks. Thanks so much for, for all that you do for baseball. Thank, thank you for all that you do for baseball. This is, I love listening to the podcast and a uh, huge fan. And this is, I'm, I'm so excited to share. Well, as always, Brandios can be found at Brandios on all the social medias and and on online at Brandios.com as well. So Jason, thank you. I'm going to let you get back to your day. Thank and, you. Uh, enjoy the the wonderland that is San Diego. I'm so the jealous. Wonderland, the wonderland, yes. Yeah. The, um, Beautiful 70 degrees and sunny 24/7. Holy smokes. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thanks Jason. Have a good Talk one. Talk to you soon. All right everyone, welcome back. I'm very pleased to be joined right now by the director of Visit Binghamton and the senior vice president of tourism of the Greater Binghamton Chamber of Commerce, Judy Hess. Judy, hello. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to be speaking with you right now about carousels in Binghamton, New York, because this ever since this nickname came out for the for the double A baseball team in Binghamton, the Binghamton Rumble Ponies, everyone just said, what the heck's a Rumble Pony, right? And we've talked about that on this this episode already. And we've said a couple of times, oh, it's, you know, Binghamton is the carousel capital of the world. Yes. What makes Binghamton, New York, the carousel capital of the world? Well, um, back at the turn of the century, we were the home to uh, Endicott Johnson Shoes. And they were a major manufacturer for shoes. Um, in fact, they supplied almost all of the shoes for our our um, troops fighting in World War One and World War Two. So it's huge. And the owners of the shoe factory really wanted to do the whole quality of life for their employees. So they built hospitals. They helped them help them build homes. They created parks. And in the parks, they put carousels. So they donated six different carousels that are located in area parks with the understanding that there never be a charge to ride on the carousel because the Johnsons were poor as children. So they wanted to make sure that everyone got to ride and enjoy something. So it's very cool. So when were these carousels built? Were they built then during that that era or or did yeah, they come from there, somewhere it was, else? It was like the 19, 1914 to like 1920 something is when they donated them. They're all Herschel carousels that came from Western New York in North Tonawanda. That's where the carousels were actually built. Do the people of Binghamton actually make use of these? Like when you, if you're walking through town, you know, do you see people on the carousels taking pictures, you know, listening to the music? You do. Uh, they're actually open from Memorial Day to Labor Day. Okay. Um, but several years back, all six of the carousels um, were put in enclosures so that they are protected from the elements. Because as you can imagine, the organ music and things like that is very sensitive. So being exposed to winters in New York wasn't the best thing for them. So they're run by different municipalities. So for instance, the city of Binghamton has one at Ross Park and Recreation Park. And so they are open and people do use them. We have bus groups that come in and do them, you know, just for a ride, the nostalgic uh, feeling for that. But then they'll also do special programming at different times of the year. So like um, this past weekend and for two more weekends, the city of Binghamton is doing holiday rides at Recreation Park. So they have the carousel open. They have it all lit up with, you know, holiday lights and they're doing like horse drawn wagon rides and things like that, just to encourage people to come outside in the colder weather. So are there people who do like all six of these in a day? 
Uh, yes, and we actually have what you, it's called Ride the Circuit, and we have tips for them on how they can get into all six of them in the day. You have to start west, work your way east because of the times that the carousels open, but it is possible. And then at the end of that, you'll get like a pin with a jewel on it showing it, you that you completed the circuit. How long a day is that? How long would that take you to do all six of them? It would probably take them from 10 a.m. to uh, to 5 p.m. when the last park closes, <laughs> only because like the parks are about 10, 15 minutes apart and they are in six different parks. But it's sure. really a fun thing to do. It's possible to do it in a day. Um, of course, we encourage people to do it over two or three days and just stay in town. Of course, of course, <laughs> especially during baseball season. If you're exactly. open for Memorial Day to Labor Day, <laughs> catch a ball game. <laughs> So I know there are a lot of towns, you know, for instance, that call themselves the blueberry capital of the world. There are a lot of towns that are the, you know, asparagus capital of the world. Are there any other competitors out there? Are there any other carousel capitals of the world who are trying to take this title from you? There are not. Our collection of six antique carousels is the largest in the world. And to give you a little bit of frame of reference, there's only about 150 working carousels in the world. Mm -hmm. And we have six of them. So uh, yeah, we do not have any competition on that, and uh, we're pretty excited by that. Different people have carousels, and they're part of like amusement parks or things like that, but our collection is definitely unique. I sort of figured that was going to be your answer. I couldn't think of anywhere else where there was a, a you know, I, I've been to places where there's like one or two, but right. when the baseball team renamed, when they rebranded from the Binghamton Mets, which was a terrible, boring name, you don't have to comment on that. And they rebranded as the Binghamton Rumble Ponies. I know that you were involved with uh, with Visit Binghamton at the time and, and that you all were involved with sort of promoting the Name the Team contest. First of all, during the Name the Team contest, were there any ideas that that you had other than the, something having to do with the carousels? Were there thoughts, you know, as, as a representative of, of Visit Binghamton, were there things about the town that you wanted the team to highlight? Well, I, I'm glad that they came up with the Rumble Pony. And to be honest with you, Paul, up until that contest, I did not realize that an individual carousel horse was called a Rumble Pony. So for as many years as I've been doing this, I learned something. So I love that. Um, about the only other thing that I like, and I think is super unique to us, but may or may not be a good thing when you're a baseball team, is um, we are the hometown to Rod Sterling. He grew up in Binghamton, so they could have been called like the Twilight Zones, but you know, I'm not really sure that that would equate well because most of the games in the Twilight Zone ended on a very weird note, not just with a simple victory. <laughs> they could have been though. I mean, Twilight, I mean, I sort of associate Twilight the time of day with baseball, right? I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's sort of right yeah. around there. Yeah. Um, sometimes you get uh, major league players in the twilight of their career who are sort of, you know, trying to well, to, to stay in baseball mm -hmm. there. So I don't know. I think the Binghamton Twilights could have been a neat twist on the Twilight Zone. So did did the team being named the Rumble Ponies, did that create a certain amount of buzz? Did it create? I mean, I didn't I obviously didn't know that Binghamton was the carousel capital of the world. So right. is it something that was there a sort of boon in tourism? Was there a boon in interest in these carousels because of the baseball team? You know, there really was. Um, and it's so interesting because I love the whole concept of renaming the teams and making them, you know, community based and not just their affiliate. So I thought that was a great exercise. And then it, it definitely increased interest in our carousels, you know, like you're saying, why pick that name for this community? But then the really cool thing, and I don't know if you've had a chance to visit the stadium, but it's beautiful. And they've actually branded the stadium. So like their logo of the, the carousel horse, like on the, um, is, is everywhere. It's like on the metal garbage cans, on the back of the seats. And it's really incorporated into the stadium. And it's such a cool visual that it works so well. Sure. And, well, and the logo itself, and we've talked about this a little bit on this episode already, but there's a there's a obviously sort of an unexpected quality to, you know, when you hear a carousel, especially these carousels that were built more than 100 years ago. And you think of, like you say, the organ music and, you know, the individual, I, I think of, these sort of nuanced, uh, delicate animals that are now protected because of the, you know, the the elements, and obviously the elements are pretty severe in, in Binghamton, New York, anyway. But then, you know, you juxtapose that with the logo itself, which is essentially this, you know, this this kick-ass horse who has, you know, boxing gloves and and you know is is kind of menacing looking. Yes. Um, was there, you know, obviously you, you want that for, for a sports team, but was there any concern from, from visit Binghamton's perspective of just like, oh gosh, that's not the perspective of, of carousels that we want to portray. 
No, I think it's kind of fun. It's a great way to play off of the car the normal carousel horse. But if you ever get to see a carousel, there there are other animals. Like we've got different right. animals on our carousels in addition to horses. So it's a really great way to show the strength of the team and throughout the strength of a horse. Because, you know, yeah, you may think of a little pony on the carousel, but, you know, when you're for a little kid riding on the carousel, they can kind of picture themselves riding a stallion and, you know, being in the open field and stuff. So I think it ties in really nicely with a kid's imagination. Do you go to the games often? Have you been to the, to see the Rumble Ponies play in person? Yes, I, I have. It's a great experience. It's, um, it's a fun experience and they definitely do things to integrate kids, like some of the on-field activities and stuff that they do. They're always looking to change up the food, which I kind of like too. You know, yeah, you got to have your Cracker Jacks when you're at a baseball game, but um, it's just really nice the way that they do that and the way that they bring everyone in the community or try to be as inclusive to all members of the community to come to a game. You definitely get that feeling from them that they are community partners. What's your concession of choice when you go to a game? What do you, when you picture yourself right now at a at a Binghamton Rumble Ponies game? What do you, what are you eating? I'm a hot dog and baseball and beer girl. Baseball, hot dog and beer, baseball girl. That sounds better, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I kind of go for the good old fashioned all American hot dog. It's, good. it's perfectly good to go traditional. I'm you know I'm a helmet Sunday guy, but uh, you know that's well established for listeners of this podcast. So. <laughs> I really do hope to get to a game there someday. Uh, I do have, I have one of the helmet Sundays, the little ice cream helmets with the Binghamton logo on it. Uh, maybe we'll get there on one of our baseball Palooza road trips. Perfect. Judy, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate you hopping on this morning to talk about the, the rumble ponies and Binghamton and carousels. Where can people go to, to visit, visit Binghamton and learn more about uh, coming to see a ball game and explore some, some carousels. Awesome. Well, first of all, thank you so much. I love talking about our baseball team. They're such an integral part of our community. Love promoting them. And any of your listeners that want to learn more about the baseball team or our community in general, it's visitbinghamton.org. We also have a very active social media that you can find links from our website. But yeah, visitbinghamton.org. Thank you. That's perfect. Have a great day. Thanks so much. Thank you, Paul.